How's it going everybody? This is Beat the Bush. This is FNI RSI's DPOS 350P oscilloscope. Four in one, 350 megahertz oscilloscope. DPO meaning digital phosphor oscilloscope. It doesn't actually have phosphor in it. It's just mimicking the old oscilloscopes that used to have phosphor in it. Those oscilloscopes would do a trace and if there's slight differences in the repetitive pattern, then you can see it faintly on there versus scopes that are not DPO. If you have many continuous signals and suddenly there's like a blip, there's one cycle that's like a little bit lower, a little misfigured or something, then it won't show up on the scope itself and you're gonna miss that. DPO means that it's gonna mimic that display. So it's going to capture everything and overlay all that information all on one screen for you. It also has a function generator that's 50 megahertz, sine wave only. Other shapes and forms, it's like 10 megahertz, five megahertz, or three megahertz, depending what you select. It also is a frequency response analyzer. This is helpful for analyzing amplifiers or filters, what kind of roll off it has. So it's gonna inject a frequency sweep and give you sort of like a frequency response plot along with the phase too. Lastly, it's also a frequency spectrum analyzer. Not just your regular old FFT that you get in scopes. I mean, this one can do it over here, right? But usually the FFT in scopes doesn't allow you to put cursors on top of it. There's not as much ways to analyze the signal itself. Because there's so many functions, I just cannot cover it all. So instead, I'm gonna bring up the things that I noticed that's different between this scope and your regular old Tektronix scopes. Let me go back and unbox this real quick and show you what's included. Instruction manual. The scope itself, it comes sealed, so you have to break this bag open. The top has BNC connectors for channel one, channel two, and the function generator. On the left, there are these triangle designs. It feels cold to the touch, so it feels like metal. And on the right, there's a power button, a few more triangular designs, and a USB-C connection. On the back, there's a little fan and also a kickstand for you to stand it up. It comes with a host of accessories. By the way, the top of the box says FNI RSI and the back says nothing, and it's a semi-soft hard case. Here are the accessories. The AC adapter can do five volt, three amps to 12 volt, 1.8 amps. The five volt would be 15 watts and the 12 volt will be 21.6 watts. And it's a USB-A output, comes with a USB-A to USB-C cable. Here's your typical function generator output. There's two alligator clips and your scope probes comes with a bunch of rings for you to color code it, a scope compensation screw, and some probe tip protectors. This one is so that there's a little piece of plastic on either side, and this will prevent you from touching other pins next to it. This one protects this little ring on top in case there are connectors or wires flying around that would accidentally touch this. The probes that comes with the scope almost always matches the scope bandwidth. This scope is 350 megahertz, and these probes are 350 megahertz as well. But when you look at this user guide, it does not have a 350 megahertz option. I do not see the 350 megahertz probe characteristics in this chart. The probe itself over here also does not have a model number on it that says P6000 something. This is one of their newer products. It's one of their fastest scopes. So I think they just didn't update this instruction sheet yet. There's a pretty hefty battery in here, 3.7 volts, 8,000 milliamp hour. It's 10 watts, so on a full charge, you can run it for about three hours without plugging it in. It's portable battery powered. It's actually lit on these little triangles on the side and also on this side. But when you plug it in, it changes to a purple to show that it's charging. But let's run it on battery for now. Notice that I have both channels on. Let me turn off the FFT display first. And it's a pretty responsive touchscreen. Once you get used to the controls, it's pretty easy. I can select channel two, increase it, touch the left half or the right half to expand the time base, and then draw your attention to this. It says bandwidth 150 megahertz. We want 350, double channel, but you can't actually do that. See, if I try to select full 350 megahertz on channel two, I can't do that. But if I turn it off, channel one becomes full 350 megahertz. So it's single channel 350 megahertz bandwidth. If you have dual channel turned on, the max it can go is 150 megahertz. Another point that's very expensive in scopes is the memory depth. 60K points or 60,000 points, it's not very many, but this is enough to do your typical debugging. That's because this memory needs to be very, very high speed. And so you can't have that much of it 
and be high speed at the same time. So this scope would not be considered a very deep memory depth type of oscilloscope where you can record for like a full second at maximum sampling rate of one giga sample or something. So that's one gigabyte, right? In one second. So that's very fast. Uh, so you only get 60,000 points. Check out the other parameters of the oscilloscope. You can pause it if you're interested. Now sitting right here, I can hear the fan. It's not too noisy, but I can definitely hear it. The noise level at arm's length is 43 dB. And 43 dB sounds like kind of like a whisper. I found this touchscreen to be very smooth and easy to access. I'm gonna pull up the function generator. You can select the type of waveform over here. And the kinds that you can select is sine, square, triangle, sawtooth, sawtooth two, step, half wave, full wave rectified, exponential, ringing, square root, multi-sign. You can pick one frequency and the other frequency is just five times that. You can go at a maximum of five volt peak to peak DC there and also capture. So whatever you capture, I'll output again within its bounds, of course. You'll notice there's no sweep function in this function generator. If you go to sign, there's no start and stop frequency or anything. It would be very nice if they built this in at some point. But the thing is, when you go to function and frequency response analyzer, this is where the function generator suddenly has a sweep function. But you can only use a sweep function as part of this frequency response analyzer. I've set up a simple low pass RC filter right here. There's a 680 ohm resistor and a 2.2 nanofarad capacitor to ground. Changing the function to frequency response analyzer. The minus three dB pole on this is supposed to be 106.5 kilohertz. This cursor one is at 23 kilohertz around zero dB. So by the time it gets to minus three dB, it should be 106.5. I've moved the cursor as close as I can to minus three dB and it's 101 kilohertz. So this would be within tolerance of the components I'm using. You can also change the parameters of this sweep. Start frequency can go as low as 100 hertz and it takes a little while to update. Stop frequency, let's say we want to do 20 megahertz and the frequency count is how many measurements it's taking between these frequencies. So it's only doing 20 right now and you can vary it from 20 to 500. So let's set 500 and see what happens. It'll take a while to update because it's taking so many data points, but let's see what it does. There, finally. And as it gets to higher and higher frequency, it just kind of doesn't have as much resolution. So then it just kind of moves around over here. But the part that we're interested in is the minus three dB point. In order to make this frequency response curve work, you gotta connect both channel one and channel two. Channel one is input, channel two is output, and you still need an excitation frequency, which is the function generator. Once you go into this mode, it's gonna sweep across the star frequency to the stop frequency, at whatever number of count that you set it to be. And when it does this sweep, it's gonna have these points over here. So let's say I wanna go back to 20. And when I do 20 points, it doesn't show me the points exactly, but it kind of draws a line through those points and make a smooth curve. Finally, you also have a spectrum analyzer. This is a real spectrum analyzer. First though, let me go back to the generator. Let's say I want a 50 megahertz sine wave. There you go, five volt peak to peak. And because it's so fast, we have to zoom in a lot. Here is the trigger. We can trigger it right there. Because this is going so fast for this oscilloscope, there's some jitter in it. And here's an example of the digital phosphor. You see the trigger point is right here. That's why it all lines up right in the center. But once it triggers, it draws this line up and down, up and down, right? But then the next time it comes around, the sine wave is a little bit higher or the frequency is a little bit different. So you can clearly see how much different it is every time it does this trace. And it's doing a lot of them, at least 20 of them I can see right here. So you got this signal that's dancing around. However, when you reduce this to let's say 10 megahertz, now the signal is a lot clearer. There's less jitter. Let's do some measurements on this signal. Select measure, and you can select all of these different measurements such as Vmax, Vmin, Vaverage, Vrms, Vpeak, Vpeak to peak, F, T, T plus T minus, D, U plus D, U minus. Okay, it has all these different metrics. Generally for sine waves, I wanna know V peak to peak, 4.81. But my signal generator is a five volt peak to peak. So it's a little bit lower than what I'm setting it as. Probably there's no feedback loop. When the frequency gets a little high, the signal gets a little bit lower. Change the function to the spectrum analyzer. 
It's sweeping from 200 kilohertz to 500 megahertz. The specification says it's a 350 megahertz scope, but I'm seeing that it's going all the way to 500 megahertz. It might just be that it's usable up to 350 megahertz. Anything that's beyond that might be attenuated too much. So if I stop it at, let's say 600 megahertz, look at that, it really does stop at 500 megahertz in the frequency spectrum analyzer because there are six positions for the grid lines in the back. So it works out a lot better if you select 600. We can see this peak right here is 50 megahertz. Okay, let's zoom in into that 100 megahertz and 50 megahertz was right there. And we can also do, let's say 49 megahertz, stop, 51 megahertz. And then we can zoom in very, very closely. Look at that. And then we can do frequency width one megahertz, 10 megahertz, or you can choose to select it by the center frequency here. 50 megahertz is our signal, and then we can change the frequency width. One megahertz means this span is one megahertz, or we can zoom out a little bit, 20 megahertz. So it's very narrow right there. We can also take a screenshot over there, save the screenshot, the function. FFT length, if you increase the length to 32K, you can get more resolution, but it's slower. Waterfall display, look at that. I can't actually change the frequency right now, but if it does change, you can see it on this display later. I can just pull it out though right here and stop the signal. And you can see it stops right there. Put it back in and it begins again. And let's see other cool stuff like the 3D display. Look at that. Turn that off, turn it back on. If you want it faster, but less resolution, you can go all the way to 4K. Now you see it update a lot faster but you have lower resolution. This is certainly very useful. There are other system functions like over here, calibration settings, system calibration, connect a USB, automatic shutdown within one hour. You can set up a timeout time so it doesn't kind of drain itself if you're not actively using it. Language settings comes in four different languages. Some of you ask if these things do XY plots. Yes, it does. Go to channel two, turn it on first and set it up properly so that you can see a lot of the waveform and not clipped or anything. And then you go to function, XY mode display right there. And this is really indicative of the jitter. If it's a perfect sine wave, it's just gonna be a straight line. But because there's jitter and there's variation in amplitude, you see this kind of oval that's bigger than a very thin line. Of course, you can also turn off the background grid. I like the grid on most of the time and you can change the color temperature. If it's red, then it's being traced over a lot. If it's blue, then that's just a lone trace coming out. So you can kind of see a heat map of where the signal is concentrated. So on the very right side, there's a battery. This thing will last three hours on a full charge. Let's take a screenshot. Screenshot saving browser. We can look at the picture browser, which is the screenshots I've taken. Look at that. I did the Bodhi plot here for my RC filter. There's a spectrum analyzer here and also the scope screen capture. I just saved the sine wave so we can go to browser, waveform browser. This is actually saving the actual data so you can actually zoom in to the waveform after the fact. It's not just a picture. By the way I'm using this, you can see that it's pretty responsive in the touch screen. And finally, if you wanna turn it off, push the on button one time and it turns off. This is something I'm actually gonna keep because my fastest scope is only 100 megahertz and I paid over $3,000 for that thing. Overall, I think the fact that you even get a frequency response analyzer and a spectrum analyzer makes this just worth it, just on its own, just those two things. But you also get the 350 megahertz scope, which is you know the main thing that it's supposed to do. One tiny nitpick I wanna say about this. Internally, channel one is yellow and channel two is light blue. None of the rings they give you is yellow. I wish it was, but they do have the blue one, so your channel two is okay. But your channel one's gonna be green, pink, or red instead of yellow. A small thing, but I hope they changed it eventually. If you guys are interested in this FNI RSI 350 megahertz digital phosphor oscilloscope, function generator, frequency response analyzer, and spectrum analyzer all in one, check out my affiliate link down in the video description below. Thanks for watching this video. Until next time.